freedom from bondage of sin. He has set us free from the freedom of a, a depression. God, you have set us free. You have made us new creatures in Christ. You have made us more than conquerors. We worship you and we give you the praise and all the glory and the adoration tonight. For you are worthy tonight. We worship you and we love you, almighty God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to be in God's house, amen? How many glad to be set free, amen? It's good to be here. It's good to have Brother Alex uh, back, uh, Barra, back from Europe. He, we met him last year. He went over to Europe with 1st Brigade, came back, was here for a few months, and then went back over again with 2nd Brigade. So it feels like it's been for a long time, but it's good to have him back in the house, Lord, back in Kansas, back in the midst of the heat. I know he doesn't like the heat. It's cooler there back home, but... It's good to have him back here in the house, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us tonight I'd like to ask our usher to come help us receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. All Christians do pay tithe and gladly give any offerings as unto the Lord. You can give online at our website, www.myntcc.org slash Junction City KS or our cash shop, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. You give and God will bless you according to your giving tonight. Brother Ron, sir, would you please pray? Amen. Praise the Lord. We do thank you for your giving tonight. And may God bless you according to your giving. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to direct your attention to the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 through 28. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And directing her attention back to verse 27 for a text. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I like to preach in a thought or title of a message Persistent till the end. Persistent till the end. Pastor, sir, would you please pray, sir? Amen. Persistence is a great attribute or a great key to life. To be persistent means continuing to exist despite interference or treatment. 
It is continuing to persist or to go on resolutely or stubbornly in spite of opposition, importunity, or warning. To persist is to remain unchanged or fixed in a specified character, condition, or position. To be insistent in the reception or pressing of an utterance such as a question or an opinion. To continue to exist especially past a usual, expected, or normal time. You think about someone who's persistent, someone who uh, perhaps uh, it feels like they're nagging you, doesn't it? Uh, and maybe it's a little child, Mama, I, I want a cookie, Mama, I want a cookie, Mama. And they continuously ask perhaps you question time after time, perhaps the same question. You're like, I just answered that question. Why do you keep asking? Uh, no, I told you no, no. Go and sit down. No, they're persistent to the point to where you say, fine. Here, let's get you a cookie. Or, hey, let's get you whatever you design, right? I, I want that toy in the store. I want uh, this. Uh, you're persistent and you're, you're, you're keep going at it. And at times, you'll find perhaps even people, uh, as you may be driving uh, uh, past people who are homeless or on the side of the road, perhaps they're there and they hold up a sign on the side of the road and, and they might be there day after day, persistently holding that sign, hoping perhaps uh, for one individual to stop and, uh, and to give them what they have need of, perhaps to, to give them that money, despite perhaps all the... Um, the heat that we're experiencing, right? Or the cold when it's, it's cold out and it's windy and, and we're shivering. We don't want to be outside. Perhaps all of the looks that come their way as, as someone drives by and, and perhaps uh, someone has that attitude of look at them. Uh, they're disgusting or, or, the, or they ignore them. Perhaps many people who, who ignore them or, or of all the failures, uh, they stand there on the side of the road and they persistently ask for help. They persist. And people who persist uh, tend to make things happen. I'm doing what's needed in order to get what I want. Uh, perhaps uh, you're persistent. Uh, you're, you're continuing to, to make moves. You're continuing to perhaps better yourself. To maybe a better education. Or, or perhaps getting those certifications you need uh, to get promoted. Uh, or whatever the case may be. You're persistent in accomplishing your goal. What you set out. Despite what everybody else might say. Despite what everybody else uh, might think or do. Or, or what uh, someone says you can or cannot do. You're persistent saying I can do it. And here was this woman of Canaan. The Bible tells us. She came out of the coast. Jesus had departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And this woman had come out. And she cried out unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed of a spirit. Here was this woman. She was an outsider to the Jews. She had no rights. She had no inheritance to what the Jews had, to what God had promised to Israel. She was considered a dog. She was someone to be ignored, someone to be looked down upon because of who she was and where she came from. However, she still persisted. She persisted and came to Jesus uh, because she had a need in her heart. Uh, she had a need in her life. Uh, and perhaps it wasn't her own personal need, uh, but it was the need for her daughter. And she realized, uh, I got I to gotta have this need met. Uh, I don't want my daughter to keep going through what she's going through. I need to get to Jesus. She had a need. She wasn't leaving. She wasn't letting go until she got what she came for at the very feet of Jesus. She had a need. Her need was for her daughter to be restored. Because you see, her daughter was vexed with the, vest, with the devil. She was being, uh, that word vexed, you, uh, mean, basically means she was being controlled by a demon. And she was not in control of her functions. We read throughout the Bible of others of instances of people who are possessed. Perhaps uh, you can think of the most notable one, the man uh, who was uh, possessed of demons uh, and whose name was considered legion because uh, he had many devils uh, and he would be tormented day and night, cutting himself in the tombs, crying out in torments. Seemingly no control. And so here was this young girl, this daughter, 
They weren't in their right mind, and they had all of this uh, harmful, destructive behavior in their life. And so here was this young girl, this daughter of this woman, and, and no doubt uh, this woman perhaps tried everything she could. Uh, she tried to help her daughter. Perhaps she tried to calm her down. Uh, perhaps she tried uh, to get medicines that uh, might help her daughter to be calm, and, or whatever the case. Perhaps she tried all the other religions uh, and all the other uh, uh, um gods that were out there and she tried to, oh maybe this God will help and maybe this God, maybe this devil will listen to this God. Whatever the case, she tried perhaps everything she could. And yet her daughter was still vexed. Yet her daughter was still not in her right mind. And can you imagine, uh, many of you perhaps, uh, some of you are mothers, uh, and no doubt, uh, uh, perhaps, can you imagine uh, your child being vexed with a demon, uh, being vexed with a devil, uh, to the point you couldn't control them, uh, you had no control, and perhaps you tried everything, uh, can you imagine perhaps uh, what it was like, what it's like uh, to see your child in trouble? And so here this woman was, and she felt perhaps hopeless. Perhaps she tired, she was tired, and perhaps she cried uh, daily, uh, every night as, uh, as she went to bed, uh, praying, God, uh, or whoever's out there, uh, I need help, uh, I need you to touch my daughter. She was tired, no doubt at the end of her rope, as she watched her daughter being controlled. She was ready for it to be over. No doubt she was scared for the life of her child, but even possibly her own. Something had to give. We can always speculate what might have happened if it had been allowed to continue on. We can only speculate and imagine, uh, but we know that no doubt the life would not have been uh, uh, very pleasant. It wouldn't have been fruitful, uh, and no doubt uh, uh, terrible things perhaps would have came to this uh, family. And so Jesus was her last hope. Jesus was the last hope, and she cried out to Jesus for him to have mercy on her. She said, you know what? I've heard, uh, yes, I'm a Gentile. Yes, uh, I'm a woman of Canaan, uh, but I need somebody to do something for my daughter. And she had a need, uh, and she said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to Jesus. Uh, I'm going to get to this one uh, I've heard so much about. Uh, I'm going to get to this one uh, who perhaps would have nothing to do with me. I'm still going to be persistent. Uh, I'm still going to reach out. And I'm going to ask Jesus to do something in her life. It was a cry of anguish, a cry of desperation. This woman was desperate for her need to be met. And so she cried out, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it tells us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here was this woman. She began to call on the name of the Lord. She didn't care who else might hear. She didn't care what others might think. All she cared about was having her knee met. All she cared about was her daughter being healed. All she cared about was getting to Jesus. And when she called on the name of the Lord, she was recognizing who he was. Here was this woman, oh Lord, thou son of David, have mercy. My daughter's grievously mess, have mercy on me. She recognized who Jesus was. It showed, shows her faith despite being an outcast. Despite being a Gentile, she knew who Jesus was. And knowing that Jesus didn't have to listen to her or even do what she needed, but he, he did. He listened to her. He heard her cry. And tonight, uh, you may feel like Jesus doesn't hear you. But tonight, uh, I tell you right now, he hears your cry. Perhaps you feel all alone. Uh, you feel like the outcast. Uh, you feel like the one uh, that just has a need and you don't understand how to overcome it. Uh, why don't you call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved tonight. Amen. So she called on him, but he answered her not a word. He answered her not a word, and then she came, and she worshipped him. She worshipped Jesus, and she told him to help her. See, it wasn't a question, Lord, can you help me? No, she worshipped him and saying, Lord, help me. Just help me, God. Help me. The disciples, uh, they wanted to send her away. 
Here was this woman crying, and, and no doubt they began, man, get out of here. Leave us alone. Uh, don't you understand who this is? This is Jesus, and, and we're walking. We're going to this place, uh, and don't you understand? He's trying to teach us something. Uh, don't you understand? He's teaching, and, and he's trying to uh, share something with us. Just leave us alone. Lord, send her away. Here's this woman being a, perhaps a nuisance. Nagging, right? Being persistent because she had something in her life. She had a need. Look at this woman who isn't a Jew, continuing to cry after us. She's making a scene. Get rid of her, Jesus. But despite all of that, he didn't get rid of her. He didn't cast her away. He didn't say, uh, get away from here. No, he held his peace. Uh, he, he, even, uh, he would even tell her, he said, was, well, it's not me for the, to take the children's bread and to cast the dogs. Uh, and she understood that. But she said, Lord, uh, I understand that. But even so, the dogs eat of the crumbs of the master's table. I understand. Uh, but I know that you can do something in my life. Uh, I know that you can heal my daughter. Amen. She persisted. And she said, Lord, help me. I'm not going away. I'm not going to stop crying out. I'm not going to turn around. I, I'm not going to be silent. I, I'm going to keep calling out. Do you have that kind of persistence tonight? Do you have that persistence in your heart to say, God, I, I've cried out. I've tried this thing. I've tried to, um, to pray. And seemingly I've heard no answer. Why don't you try again? Uh, as Jesus would even tell uh, Peter as they came in, uh, have you any meat? No, Lord, uh, we've tarried all the nights. Uh, but we've caught nothing. Uh, go back out. Uh, go a little bit deeper. Try one more time. And as they did that, what happened? Uh, they caught all that fish uh, to where the nets begin to break. Uh, they had to call their friends to come and help them. Do you have that kind of persistence to go out a little bit deeper and say, I don't care. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to live for God. I don't care what others might say. I don't care what the world might say. I don't care how I might feel. I want to live for Jesus every day. Amen. She was persistent. You see, Jesus, he answered her. First, he didn't answer a word, and the disciples told her to send her away. And he answered, I'm not come, I'm not sin, but unto the lost sheep of the, of the house of Israel. Jesus came to seek and to save that with them that were lost. You see, he came at first to his own. Israel had been given the promise of a savior. Israel had been given the promise of a soon, uh, of the Messiah and the soon coming king. Uh, and there have been many writings of the coming Messiah. How he would come and he would set up his kingdom on this earth. And, and how he would uh, uh, put everybody else under subjection. Uh, and he thought, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the Messiah, if he comes, uh, that's what's going to happen. They didn't understand the real purpose of Jesus. How he was coming to die for the sins of the entire world. All they were thinking about was the carnality of this, of this uh, physical world and setting up his kingdom. Where everything would be put under his feet and he would begin to rule. And this is what they were expecting. This is what they were looking forward to. And so Jesus came what? To his own. But as a lamb, which was not what they were expecting. They weren't expecting a lamb that would be led as, as a lamb without, um, to the slaughter. They weren't expecting someone to die. They weren't expecting the Messiah to die. They were expecting him to set up his kingdom. They were expecting that promise of a savior. And so when he came to this earth and he, he came and he walked this earth and he lived amongst us, uh, uh, but he didn't know sin and he did all these different miracles and he healed different ones uh, and he, he even sat amongst those who were uh, publicans and sinners uh, and even to the point he would rebuke different ones uh, and they didn't understand it and so they began to hate him and despise him and, and they rejected him. In John chapter 1 and verse 11, the Bible says that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. They rejected him because he wasn't what they were expecting. He taught with one who has authority. He rebuked. He healed. He forgave those who of sin. He loved the sinner despite all the objections of the Pharisees. Despite all of the religious hypocrites. He still loved the sinner. He still forgave them. He proclaimed himself to be the son of almighty God. He was the one that was their Messiah. But they rejected him. 
They rejected him. They put him on that cross. And they were the ones that yelled out, crucify him. Ultimately rejecting Jesus. You see, it wasn't just them uh, physically that did it, but it was our sins, was it not? Our sins was the one, the, our sins is what put Jesus on that cross. Uh, our sins uh, and our, our transgressions, uh, uh, because of us, uh, uh, He died on that cross for our sins uh, when it should have been us uh, on that cross. Uh, when it should have been us uh, who died and went to hell, Jesus had mercy upon us. Uh, Jesus showed us love. Uh, Jesus showed us compassion. Jesus showed us uh, grace, uh, unmerited favor. Why? Because He loves you tonight. He loves loves me. He loves the entire world. Amen. He came to what? To seek and to save them which are lost. He came for those who, who didn't have everything put together. He came for those who were sinners. Uh, he came for those who, who didn't have any righteousness to call their own. Uh, all they had was filthy rags. Uh, but he said, I'm going to give you a, a riches. Uh, and trade in those filthy rags. Uh, I'm going to give you a robe uh, that's white as snow. I'm going to give you something so much better than what you have. Those who were sinners. Those who were fornicators. Those who were adulterers, those who were haters and thieves and murderers. He came for each and every one of us. He came for those who didn't have everything put together. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who was lost? I was lost. You were lost. Uh, the whole entire world was lost in sin. Uh, but Jesus came uh, to seek and to save us uh, by dying on that cross for our sins. We were the ones who were lost and dying and on our way to hell. Well, the Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for each and every one of us. It's a personal thing. You see, our sins had separated us from Almighty God. It caused us to be lost. Like going down a dark path in the middle of a forest with no light, no sunshine, no moon, no stars to direct your way, no torch, no, no fire, no light at all. Just stumbling amongst the dark, hoping to get to your destination. Hoping no light to guide us. Stumbling along the way. We were lost. But Jesus came to show us the way. Jesus came to light the way. Jesus came uh, to be that light. Uh, it doesn't matter where you come from tonight. Uh, it doesn't matter who you might know or, or what you know. All that matters tonight. Uh, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you given your life to Him? Uh, if not, tonight uh, is a good night to surrender your life to Jesus. Jesus came to save you and me from our sins, from being lost. When you're lost, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come for you. For any one of us, uh, tonight uh, might be our last night. Uh, right now, this very service uh, might be your last service that you might ever be in. And tonight, I pour you. Uh, I plead with you. Uh, make sure that your heart is right. Uh, make sure uh, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Because if you die lost without Him, if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul, what have you truly gained? Nothing. You will die lost forever, separated from God. And so this woman, she stayed persistent. And we see her persistence pays off. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Here is her faith, here is persistence. Uh, I understand what you're saying, uh, but I still, uh, I can still get a blessing. Uh, it might be a little crumb, but I still can receive that need in my life. He said, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Her faith was great enough to, no one was going to stop her. No one was going to tell her, um, to stop her, tell her she can't have her need met. She realized, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm not a Jew. But that didn't stop her. That didn't keep her from getting to Jesus. She believed and she had faith that the Lord, the Son of David, the Messiah could touch her daughter. She believed it. Tonight, do you believe it? Do you believe on the Lord Jesus? 
But the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it's impossible to come unto God. We have to have faith. We have to believe in our hearts that God has, uh, that Jesus died and God hath raised him from the dead. And you shall be saved. He said we, have, we need to have faith and believe. Why? Because he's a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. When we seek him and we persisted and we're persistent about what we have need of. So what? I don't have an answer perhaps uh, on my first or on my second approach. And perhaps uh, uh, I, I don't hear uh, everything. Uh, perhaps I, I don't feel anything. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to persist. Uh, I'm still going to continue. I'm still going to believe. So God didn't answer the first time or the 50th time. I'm still going to believe. I'm still going to pray. And we see that her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The result of her persistence was her daughter was made whole. No longer vexed with the devil. No longer in torment. No longer um, in that condition. From that very moment that she exercised her, exercised her faith, it was done unto her. The very moment that she believed, it was done we need to be persistent tonight. As the musicians come, we need to be persistent in our life for Jesus. Don't quit. Don't give up on what you have need of. Take it to God tonight. Keep praying. Keep uh, asking. Seek God. Uh, when this altar is opened up, come to God and just believe and allow God to do something in your life. In James chapter 5 and verse 15. He said, in the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of faith. Do you believe tonight? Do you believe enough to get up and say, you know what? I'm coming to Jesus. With all my uh, problems, with all my excuses, with all my mess ups and my failures and, and all my sins, I, I'm coming to Jesus. I, I don't have time to wait uh, until tomorrow or till next week. I, I don't have time to wait uh, until I have my life put together. I need to get to Jesus right now. Amen. Will you be persistent till the end? With every head bowed and eyes closed. And